supernatural overflow. Please, with the excitement in our hearts, let's celebrate Jesus, the owner and the builder of the church, and also celebrate him for the life of our father and mother. It is testimony time, reading from Judges 7, 18. Bible says, when I blow with the trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpet also on every side of all the camp, and say, the sword of the Lord and the sword of Gideon. In this scripture, by the sword of the Lord and by the sword of Gideon, God gave his people victory. In this house, by the sword of the Lord and by the sword of his servant, Reverend Dr. Kojo Boate Bempa, we always have testimonies. Please put your hands together and thank God for always working in this house. Our first testifier, Sister Sandra, testifies of supernatural provision of a job. She says, after following daddy's ministry from 2020, I decided to be specific about my prayer request according to the teachings we are blessed with. Before this revelation, all I was asking was for God to promote me or give me a new job as I had been in the last job for five years. When I received my prayer card for 2021, I wrote, God, give me a new job as a legal counsel in a multinational where I can use my French. I believed God for open doors in the West Africa region. She means that this time she was more specific. Now, during the 30 days of journey of faith and power in 2021, and especially at Hannah Hour, I prayed fervently about it because I felt it was my time. I also sowed a seed in foreign currency on the International Day in November 2021. Within that period, I applied for a job with an Australian mining company and was not successful. It got me very worried, but I pressed on and told myself that it might not be God's plan for me. And as a daughter of Reverend Bempa, everything was working for my good. In December 2021, I came across an advert and I applied without thinking much about it. All I knew was that the company was multinational. Later during my research, I found out that they were, they were French owned and I'll be working with francophones in the office and other markets. I had two interviews, one on the 27th of January and the other on the 25th of March, 2022. And I sowed a seed before and after the interviews and wiped my face with my mantle during both interviews. People of God, within the next few months, I was confirmed for the role and given an offer. Hallelujah to the glory of God. I will start work on the 20th of July, 2022. I want to thank Jesus. You answered my prayer perfectly. This morning, God will answer your prayer perfectly. I want to thank Jesus for this powerful testimony. Sister Lydia also testifies of a miracle job. She says a friend invited me to Holy Hill Chapel on Friday, the 31st of December, 2020. I felt reluctant to come because I did not want anything to do with church. But upon second thoughts, I came and decided to join the church after service. Around this time, I had been searching for a job for three years without success. Some relatives even promised me a job, but failed to fulfill their promise. When I joined the church, I started paying my tithes and sowing seeds as taught by daddy for a miracle job. In March 2021, I had an encounter in which a young man carrying a backpack teasingly told me that he had taken everything from me. I started crying in the dream, but suddenly daddy appeared there and took the bag from the man. He then gave me the bag, and when I opened it, the first thing I saw was a piece of paper on which was written, Job. On Tuesday, the 6th of April, 2021, I received a message from my uncle that read, tell your niece to bring me her documents tomorrow. This was from a prominent person. I was called for an interview on Friday, the 4th of June, 2021, which I passed successfully by God's grace. People of God, on Friday, the 1st of April, 2022, I was given my appointment letter to start work. The gloomy truly becomes glorious in Holy Hill Chapel. Thank you, Jesus, for this glorious testimony. Indeed, Jesus is Lord. For everyone who appreciated this testimony, anything the devil has taken from you, you are getting it back in Jesus' name. Our final testimony to be read before we take our life is from Sister Na, and she says, 
swallowed battery, supernaturally flashed out by the power of God in the communion. Can you imagine a little child swallowing a battery? She says, my daughter told me that my four-year-old son swallowed a battery on Monday, 9th May, 2022. I took him to see a pediatrician and were requested to do a CT scan to show where the battery was found. Unfortunately, the scan report could not detect where the battery was. And so we had to do an X-ray. And the X-ray report detected that the battery was in his small intestines. The doctor told us that there was nothing he could do to give, nothing he could give him to bring it out due to his age. So I should give him enough fibrous foods and monitor his stool to see if the battery would come out on its own. He, however, told us that due to the acidic nature of the battery, it should not stay in his stomach for long. I then remembered daddy's teachings on the power of God in the communion wine and started administering to my son day and night. I kept monitoring his tools, but still did not find the battery. However, in faith, we went back to the hospital to take another x-ray on Friday the 13th of May, 2022, because I believed that the communion had flashed it out supernaturally. People of God, the x-ray report showed that there was no battery in my son's small intestines. Indeed, there is power in the blood of Jesus. And that is all this morning. Any strengthening in your body is coming out in Jesus' name. Please, with a clap, let's welcome our sister, Sister Essinam, to share her testimony of supernatural completion of examination. Please welcome her with a better clap. Please tell us your name once again and what the Lord has done. Supernatural overflow. Please help me thank Daddy and Mommy for giving me the opportunity to share this testimony. And thank Jesus, the owner and the builder of the church as well. My name is Deborah Isena Magbeli. So a couple of weeks ago, we had um, a church workers meeting. And prior to that, I had um, a mid sim and then a case study the same day to submit. So I started the case study and then due to time, I quickly rushed down for the church workers meeting, which I was late for. But then right after the church workers meeting, Papa asked that we all move up to do um, the call. Meanwhile, I still had this mid and in case study to work on. But then I went anyway. So a few minutes into the, uh, the call making, I received a, a chat on my WhatsApp. And somebody asked, is this Deborah? And I said, yes. And then the person sent me a message that he had mistakenly logged into my portal and had done my mid <laughs> And I had 49 out of 50. <laughs> and when he realized it was a mistake, he logged into his own portal and did it. And he had 47 out of 50. <laughs> so I want to thank God for rewarding me for my faithfulness. Amen. This morning, every mistake will work in your favor in Jesus' name. All you have to do is to believe the man of God. As he declares the word, believe it, and you shall have your own testimony. Once again, put your hands together for the Lord and thank him for the testimony. Supernatural overflow. Daddy, mommy, thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. We are grateful.
your two hands you are going to tell the Holy Ghost teach me wisdom today Spirit of God teach me wisdom today lift your hands pray that prayer 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 oh mali kali salava halo sefele makali sa sundini mi kalasi tele mahaya la papa babo shete katakala bala Rapa de gele gada la gale gele gezi ala gali zoda la haya. Las kadimo koski pa akali katule magada ya. Oh, we give God praise. We give God praise. We give God praise. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And the Bible said in the book of Proverbs chapter 28 verse 20. It said, a faithful man shall abound with blessings. But he that make it his to be rich shall not be innocent. A faithful man, the one doing it right, shall abound with blessing. I want to show you a testimony of one of our young ladies who used to be here. This young lady used to come. Uh, by the way, I want us to appreciate those who came very early to clean this whole place because there was a lot of water all over the place. God bless you for coming and uh, sanctuary keepers. May the Lord fill your tongues with a lot of blessings. Now this young lady used to come to church. Though they were in the tent, she, the, she can stand alone and clean the whole tent. They took her to a boarding school which didn't allow her to go out on weekend, but she would run away and come to church and clean. At that time, the family was going through a lot of crisis. And through her, her brother came to church, her mother came to church. Then the turnaround began. God began to move her academically from one, somebody who even is, her school was obstructed. The Lord carried her to Canada. 
She had to do sometimes three jobs to keep her going. And last week she graduated as the best student in her department. And um, when they were doing the university uh, congregation, she was the one called all over the world to give the speech. It was so glorious and so beautiful. So I want to play what happened. So you see, if you are young and you are here and you don't want to serve God, so still you give me Isabella's testimony. So amazing, so powerful. She got first class too. With all the busy, busy, busy things. Madam Chancellor, Your okay. Honor, President Keith, honorary degree recipients, fellow graduates of the class of 2022, <laughs> faculty, families, friends, and significant others. I am Isabella Fia Haji, and I feel a deep appreciation for the opportunity given to me to present the valedictory address for the Faculty of Arts, Education, and Graduate Studies. I want to congratulate the graduating class members for hitting this significant milestone. It is a remarkable achievement, and we all deserve this ceremony today. In 2019, I journeyed from Ghana, West Africa, to our stunning Prince Edward Island to pursue a Bachelor of Arts degree in political science. Even though I had a fair idea of what to expect as an undergraduate student, I was not fully prepared for the tireless yet rewarding journey ahead of me. The past four years have been anything but easy for any of us, to say the least. While I do not know everyone's story, I am confident that there are certain lived experiences that we all share. I don't think anybody expected we would have to resort to taking online classes for two years straight, or that we would be unable to interact face-to-face -face with our peers or professors. Some of us lost jobs and others witnessed a decline in the mental, physical health of themselves and loved ones. I cannot begin to imagine any additional personal issues each individual here had to endure. Yet, we were able to persevere, and as a result, we are collectively stronger and more resilient as we close this chapter in our lives. I believe gratitude is essential in this life. Thus, I cannot end this speech without acknowledging God. No one can do ex anything except God is with them. Also, I would like to recognize my dad, Mr. Lakia Haji, for his sacrifices to bring me this far. Reverend Dr. Kojo Bwatin Bempa, my mom, Mrs. Doris Haji, she's here you. today. My sister, <laughs> Sophia Haji, thank you for your love during these years. I would also like to thank you, class of 2022. You were all part of my incredible journey. My experiences here would not have been the same without every single one of you. Thank you for showing up to make this day special for all of us. Though we may be parting ways, we will forever remain united. Congratulations once again, and God is kin. Thank you. <laughs> Put your hands together for the Lord. Tell to your friend that we are not faking it here. It's not a fake thing. Uh, some people come here, they hear testimony, they say they are, they are faking. This is in Canada, you can't go there to fake. She came as the best all over. Black woman. So anytime I see the tent, I remember. When you come, she'll be there cleaning my like, oh. And look at how this God is too much. Tell your friend, this God is too much. Give the Lord a clap offering for such an amazing testimony. Holy Hill is going higher and higher and higher and higher, crossing the boundaries. Give the Lord another clap offering. <laughs> Take your seat. <laughs> How many of you are excited? <laughs> wow. This is black. This is uh, abroad. Isabella's English, one touch. <laughs> but it was made in Kokomlemle here and made in Kwame and Koma Circle. And as he got there, she never missed service. Always online. I will just cut the speech short. We are going to put it on some of the things so you listen to the whole speech. How? God has brought her through. The next one, it will be your testimony that is going to be played. Okay. Proverbs 22. Today it has rained, so we pray for those who live in the Lungus. 
the whole night I was praying, you know, for myself, for those that the water was not treating very fine. And gradually, all of them are making their way to church. So turn your Bible to the book of Proverbs. We are in 22 today, and we are reading. You ready? Go. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and love in favor rather than silver and gold. The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hided himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. Tons and snares are in the way of the flower. He that do keep his soul shall be far from them. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. He that had a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. Cast out the scorner, and contention shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. He that loveth pureness of heart, for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. The eye of the Lord preserve knowledge, and he overthroweth the words of the transgressor. The slothful man saith, There is a lion without, I shall be slain in the street. The mouth of a strange woman is a deep pit. He that is abhorred of the Lord shall fall therein. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of corruption shall drive it far from him. He that will praise the poor to increase his riches, and he that give it to the rich shall surely come to want. Bow thou thine ear, and hear the words of the wise, and apply thine arm unto knowledge, my knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within, they shall without be fitted in thy lips. That thy trust may be in the law, I have made known to thee this day, even today. Have not I written to thee excellent things in counsel and knowledge, that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that sent unto thee. Rob not the poor, because he is poor, neither oppress the afflicted in the gate. For the Lord will plead their cause and spoil the soul of those that spoil them. Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. Least thou learn his ways, and get a snare by thy soul. Be not thou one of them that strike hands, or of them that are shorty for death. If thou hast nothing to pay, how should he take away thy bed from under thee? Remember not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. See thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before me, men. And somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Okay, so today we are going to be looking to God's word and look, we are going to look at the wisdom that moves poverty to wealth. There is a wisdom in this book, no matter what anybody says, no matter what the economy is happening, no matter how the world system is failing, there is wisdom in God's word. That when you get to know it, poverty cannot dwell in thy house. Solomon, the wisest man that lived, was also the richest man. Why? Because wisdom produces riches. This is because of the wisdom of God. This wisdom, when applied, produces wealth. First Kings chapter 10, verse 23 and 24. 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 23 and 24. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God has put in his heart. So by the wisdom that God gave him, he exceeded everyone. He exceeded everyone. So it's no school that makes people rich. It's wisdom that makes them rich. Psalm 112, verse 1 and 3. The Bible speaking, he said, Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Now, remember, 
Anytime you see fear, the Lord is talking about wisdom because the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Bless, praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandment. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth. So, a man that walks in the fear of God, a man that walks in wisdom, the end result is that you are not going to struggle with poverty. Wisdom, in simple terms, means any idea or method that solves problems. So, when you are wise, you have ability to solve problems. You are rewarded for the problems you solve. The wiser you are, the more problems you can solve. And the more problems you solve, the weightier you become. So, divine wisdom gets things done. When somebody is wise, it doesn't just talk. It makes things to happen. Divine wisdom is proved by works, not by words. It is proved by works. Divine wisdom has tangible proofs. No one can argue that poverty is a major global problem. However, there is a wisdom that destroys poverty and brings wealth. There is a wisdom. Don't just say we can't do anything about it. If you follow what we are teaching, you come out. Because the Bible was written before all this confusion came. Now look at Proverbs chapter 8 verse 1. It says, do not wisdom cry. And understanding put forth her voice. In other words, wisdom is talking, but people are not paying attention. Wisdom is bringing solutions, but people are not applying it. Now verse 18 says that. Out of the cry of wisdom, in other words, wisdom is saying, come for me. Use my method. Follow my way. And those that will hear the cry of wisdom, riches and honor are with me. Wisdom is saying they are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Not riches that is there today is not there tomorrow. That's the, that's the Sakawa type and the Azar type and the stealing type and the cheating type. But durable riches, something that comes to stay, like we saw in Psalm 112, wealth and riches shall stay in the house. They don't become ex-champions, ex-rich people. So this is what a believer must believe for. So there is no need to steal. There is no need to cheat. Because if you use those methods, you will not have durable riches. You will just have it for some time. And you will be disgraced. So he said, wealth and riches shall be in the house. Whose house? The one that fear God. The one that has become in the, in the way of wisdom. 21. Proverbs 8, 21. So 18 says that through wisdom, you get durable riches. Riches that move from generation to generation. Then 21 says, wisdom is still talking, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. When you love wisdom, you are going to inherit properties. You are going to inherit riches. Those that love me, so those who hate wisdom, suffer poverty. I will cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasure. Somebody shall wisdom fill my treasure. Now look at Ecclesiastes 8.1. I'm, I'm, I'm talking from Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. That's what Solomon is teaching us. And he's the best teacher, not the economist teacher. Solomon is the best. Many talk economists, they have nothing to economize. Who is as a wise man? Who know the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. And the boldness of his face shall be changed. Because most of the time, when you are lacking, you don't have boldness. So what it's time to tell you is that wisdom makes you wealthy. And when you become wealthy, you become bold. And that is the anointing coming upon every holy healer. Lift your hands and receive the anointing for boldness. So today I decree by the wisdom of God, poverty dies out of your family. Seven keys, we look at them quickly. Seven keys. Seven wisdom keys that bring wealth. So there is no doubt that wisdom is a product of wisdom. The Lord said to Solomon, you have asked for wisdom, but I want you to know, wisdom does not work alone. Once you are wise, wealth will follow. Blessings will follow. So instead of praying for money, pray for wisdom. Pray for wisdom, because when you get money without wisdom... You will lose it the next day. So wisdom key number one. How do I move from scarcity 
to abundance. Number one, discover vision. Everybody here is born with a purpose. If you are born as a businessman and you become a doctor, you will be killing people. Find God's vision and you will be poor too. Because God's provision follows his vision. So when you discover the area God has called you, I wanted to go to America and work in McDonald's. I don't know how my life would have been. But God corrected me. And he put me in the right place. What is vision? The unveiling of God's plan for your life. That's the first thing. You don't start looking for money. Find out what am I wired to do? What am I created to do? Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18. Proverbs 29 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. They lose everything. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. What is he talking about? He that findeth what he is called to do by wisdom, he becomes happy. Because according to Proverbs 8, he said wisdom makes people happy. Wisdom. He said, who is a man that wants to be happy? A man that findeth wisdom. So first thing, don't start running after money. Run after God's plan. When you discover God's plan for your life and you follow it, you prosper. Wealth follow those who follow God's plan for their life. So when we talk about vision, we are talking about something that defines your life work. Something that defines your life work. Vision defines your area of contribution to human existence. Recently in America, a young guy... His father said to him that he wanted to become a doctor. So he went to medical school. After seven years, they did a graduation. After the graduation, he took the medical school certificate and brought it to his father. I said, take your certificate. <laughs> Everybody was surprised. He said, I wanted to be a musician. I'll finish your school for you. Take your certificate. Go and practice the medicine. I'm going to sing. <laughs> it wasn't long he became a millionaire. Many people have no found it. Just said, money, money, money. Money doesn't just follow you anywhere. Provision follows vision. Everyone here who has misdirection, in the name of the Lord Jesus, may God bring you to the right place at the right time. So, whatever you contribute to human system, as God has ordained you for, you prosper in that particular area. Then number two, diligence. After you have found out your work, in destiny as organized by God, because that is where he has reserved your provision. Be diligent, work hard. Wisdom demands that everybody that wants to see wealth, work hard to create channels of wealth to come to him. Psalm 1 verse 3. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So prosperity comes to doers, not talkers. It shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in the season and his leaves shall not weather. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So you have to do something to prosper. Engage in multiple jobs. Be humble to do a job per time. Don't say, I am looking for a job. I am not getting one. Create one. It is better to work than to beg. An average worker is respected than a rich beggar. An average worker is respected than a rich beggar. A worker that has young phone is better than a beggar that has iPhone 14. Because there is dignity in work. So I, I work hard. I bought it for myself. There is dignity in working, but there is shame in begging. So don't be afraid to work. Don't mind people who say, my uncle is taking care of me. I'm waiting for somebody to send me something. Put your hands to work. Solomon said in Proverbs 10 4, he said he became a poor that dealer with a slack hand. My God. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4. He said he became a poor that dealer with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent make us rich. Wow. The hand of the diligent. Proverbs 13 4. We are reading, we are, this is wisdom, so most of my quotations are from the book of Proverbs. It said, the soul of the sluggard desired and had nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fine. So hard work produces riches, according to wisdom. Now, people think that Solomon just became rich because God gave him wisdom. But I want you to know that Solomon was a businessman. He was dealing in horses. 
First Kings 10, 28 and 29. Amplified. First Kings 10, 28, 20. We are going to discover some secrets that are in the Bible. Solomon was not just sitting down and collecting money. He was a businessman. He said Solomon's horses were imported from Egypt and from Q. And the king's merchants acquired them from Q for a price. So he has, he has, he has a business conglomerate. The next verse. A chariot could be imported from Egypt for 600 shekels of silver and a horse for 150. And in the same way, they exported them by the king's merchants to all the kings of the Hittites and to the king of Aram in Syria. So you see, Solomon was a businessman. He was a king, but he was selling. Because if he wasn't busy working, he couldn't have taught us about diligence. Many, many Christians, they only pray, they don't work. You will be powerful, but you will be broke. And your brokenness does not help because you have a global kingdom to preach and everybody is supposed to contribute in building the church. Nobody builds for somebody to enjoy. Everybody is supposed to make a contribution and you can only contribute when you work hard to earn dignified wages. Wisdom demands that you avoid laziness. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 6. Oh, thou slugger. Go to the hand. Go to the hand, thou slugger. Consider her ways and be wise. They have no overseer. <laughs> they have nobody to guide them. And yet, they are able to gather their food in summer. And gather their food in harvest. Now, the verse 9. I like the verse 9. Go to Proverbs 6, 9. How long would thou sleep, O slugger? When would thou arise out of thy sleep? Like many Ghanaians, as the weather became cool yesterday night. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like they take a sleeping tablet. So, so some of them, by the time they wake up, I finish preaching. Oh, thou slugger. Turn to your friends and say, congratulations for coming very early, no matter what happened. It's a sign that you are a diligent a diligent person and prophesy to him that I see riches coming to you. I say it with confidence because it's going to happen. I, I see riches coming to you. Look at verse 10. Verse 10. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall poverty come as one that traveled and I want as an armor. Somebody shout and say, not for me. Wisdom demands that a child of God does not beg. Luke 16 verse 3. He said to beg, I am ashamed. Thank you, your friend. He said to beg, I am, I am ashamed. So to beg, it's not wisdom to beg. Proverbs 13 11. Mm. He said, wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished. But he that gathered by labor, labor, labor. All the quads say like the Nigerian way, labor. He that gathered by labor shall increase. You gather by labor. When I used to go to school because I don't want to beg, my best friend is here. When school vacate, Charlie, those days, our father's business has spoiled, our mother's business has spoiled. So my friend came to tell me that some people are making rubber company, so we should go. Early morning, 5.30, we were students. We will go. What was the one lady? They will cut the rubber. He will give me my share. We all go to Abu Abu area. He said, pass here. And I was so pass here. By 9 o'clock, we are feeling selling. When we come, we can buy rice and talia by ourselves. We were students. Instead of going around begging people. Then one day he's still here. He came to call me that. There is a man that has a boutique. And every December he'll bring all the things out. So let us go and do don't call me. We didn't have but we were, we were, we were we, to beg we were ashamed. Little boys. We'll go. This man will bring all the shoes in the boutique. And since we are students and we have other classmates who are passing through town. We will wear a cap. And where you see me, I don't see you. <laughs> and bend down our head. Your classmate will come there. We are selling a shoe to our classmate, but he doesn't know who he's talking to. 
We wear kaka motobi like the one the ninjas wear. And we will stay in the sun for one solid month. After that, the man will count his own, give us our share. Sometimes he balances out with some old shoes and other things. And that's how gradually, 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 we came out of poverty. He traveled to America. I stayed here. Never too lazy about. We used to wear the same dress. When he gets a tie, he will say, Charlie, I've gotten a new tie. And then so you see me with the blue, he will be wearing the red. And then, but laziness in here. Me and him, we used to go for crusade and carry big, big speakers. No food to eat in the afternoon. We will go for green mangoes. But we were never lazy because to beg, we were ashamed. From there, we went to do construction. Mortar. And I, I remember, I used to carry. Now, he used to go to T.I. Amas. And my father was doing a covert in front of the school. And then, I, whilst my classmates are doing vacation classes, who is classes in you? Do you have money to pay? <laughs> I will be carrying water. And I go to the same school where I see my classmates. Hey, buying me power, doing this. And I wear my same ninja dress. And I bypass them to carry the water. And then I bring it to the side. And that's how they used to miss the mortar. This is how gradually, 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 gradually. Today, I don't know those who were chilling. If they can compare themselves to us. Hard work does not kill. It blesses. Tell somebody. Hard work does not kill. It is rather lazy work that kills people. Lazy. Now. Lazy people have more malaria than hard workers. Malaria parasites don't stay in the, in, the, in the blood of people who are working like locomotive. Tap your friend and say, wake up. wake up! So work got in by vanity. So work hard. That's what wisdom is teaching. Listen to me. If you despise, he said, wisdom said that those who despise me will enter into the way of death. Now, key number three, wisdom way to prosper is giving. That's the master, the master law. The master law. We live to give, but animals live to eat. Check all the animals. When they wake up, all they do is to go and look for food to eat. The chicken, so, 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 so. They live to eat. We eat to live. And we live to give. So giving is God's master wisdom key to wealth. Proverbs 11, 24. Proverbs 11, 24. Listen here carefully. That's the main point. There is he that scattereth and yet increase. And there is that will hold more than his meat, but it tended to poverty. So you see, when you get money, even God expects that you eat within a certain limit. Even though it is your money, you, you eat within a certain limit. He keep more than his met. The others were given to you to give to others. He said, tell them who are rich to distribute. So you can't say, no, no, it's my money. It's my. Then he needs you to don't understand what wealth is. He said to Abraham, I will bless you and thou shall be a blessing. You are not ready to be a blessing. Forget about my blessings. Verse 25. The liberal soul shall be made fat. We are reading from Proverbs. Solomon is talking. And he that watered it shall be watered also himself. Wow. So you have to go around watering others. Today somebody can pay school fees. Help. Oh. You don't know where your children will be tomorrow. Help. Don't close your eye. Somebody has in pay school fees. You went and bought Gucci belt. $3,000. Use it to tie your, your pot belly. <laughs> and when you finish, you put your African dress on it so the belt will cry, nobody has seen it. <laughs> People have not been taught. Money is supposed to be used for the good of humanity. No matter the wealth you have accumulated, if you can't count the number of people you have helped, you have wasted God's resources. You have wet, you can sleep on a golden bed. Nobody cares. Those things don't matter. Look at the Dubai, Dubai king. 
What did he use to enter the grave? They put him on a white cloth. Everything he has, he has left it. Others go chop. If you don't distribute it yourself, God will find a way to distribute it himself. And what will he do? He will just take it from you. A man can receive nothing. Church people ought to understand. So that when you are helping, some people think that, oh, your mind is not correct. That's why, you are, because you don't understand the Bible. The liberal soul, you are not, it, it doesn't matter how much you have. You are not supposed to eat beyond a certain limit. So the verse 20 says that, he that keepeth the corn, the people will curse him. Look at 26. He that will hold corn, the people shall curse him. But blessing shall be upon him that selleth it. The one that giveth it shall be blessed. Many human beings live like animals. They live to eat. They live to eat. They live to eat. But we don't live to eat. We live to give. Tap your sister and say, sister, sister. Brother, we live to give. And the good news is that if you are a giver, you live long. Because God is looking for distributors. There are too many wicked people around. He's looking for distributors. Since he can't drop the money himself, he will put it in the pocket of people. Spend a little and spend more on others. I tell you. That's the best way to live. And that is how by wisdom you can prosper. Ephesians 4, 28 even tells us, we work to give. He said, let him that still still no more. Let him work with his hand. So that he may have to give to him. So that he may have to give to him. So we are givers. It is your level of giving that determines your level of wealth. Solomon began by giving. The richest man got into riches by giving. First Kings chapter 3 verse 3. Solomon loved the Lord. He went to Gibeon. He gave a thousand burnt offering. Verse 4. Verse 4. Giving makes you prosperous. Zechariah 8 12. And the seed shall be prosperous. Every time you carry seed and you sow it, either in church or in the life of others or into a kingdom project, the seed shall be prosperous. Genesis 8, 22. As long as the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest shall not cease. Luke 6, 38. I'm just, I'm just releasing the giving scriptures to you. Give and it shall be given to you. God measure, press down, shaking together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. There are many things people buy or don't buy. It's not because I'm a pastor. I saw something in the Bible. The Lord said to me, if you can practice giving on any other material things, you will see that they will begin to flow to you freely. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. You can use, you give everything out. Don't let any, 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 anything. God gave his son. Is your shoe a human being? God gave his son. What are you giving out that it is too much? So many are sat on their prosperity by not listening to wisdom. So in this giving, the master law to prosperity is giving. Even though I put it at number three. You are a hard worker, you are not a giver. Hey, <laughs> you are finished. You are a visionary, but you are not a giver. Vision is useless. Because every vision God gives you is to empower people and to lift up destinies. Wow. So in the giving areas, this is how we go. Number one, first fruit. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 and 10. There are people who have never given first fruit in their life. Any first thing they give, they spend it. So after some time, the thing begins to diagnose. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase. What is the purpose of first fruit? It means you put God first in your life. First fruit is a proof of your Matthew 63 consciousness. My God. Woo! So shall thy bands be filled. So shall thy bands be filled. That's verse 10. With plenty and that person shall burst forth with new wine. So every first fruit giver Anything you get the first one, learn how to give first fruit. Somebody bless you. Don't be in a hurry. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ooh, sour. You have chopped everything. It's finished. Number two, tighten. 
Everybody must be a tighter. Except you don't want supernatural prosperity. Many people say, Pastor, we were tightening, we didn't see anything. You are lying. You are not tightening consistently. He said, when the clouds are filled with rain, some people tie today, tomorrow they don't tie. The, the, the problem is consistency. This thing works. This thing works. He said, bring you all the time, Malachi 3, 10, into the storehouse, that they may be meat in my house. Is it not wonderful that anytime people get problems, they run to church, and yet when the church is being built, they don't want to contribute. Anytime people have problems, including politicians, everybody, they run to church. All those attacking prophets and other things. Prophets go to their bedrooms to, to pray for them. I can mention their names. They should stop the hypocrisy. When they, some, some of them were attacking, they say, when something tackled them, they are not apologizing. When were you born? Humble yourself, man. No man can ever outlive God. <laughs> I know some of them. How prophets used to sit them on a chair. Yet when they come to public, as if they have nothing to do with the church. Don't lie. Don't lie. No matter who you are, you are under the feet of God. Humble yourself. Malachi chapter 3. Bring you all the tithe into the storehouse of God. That there may be meat in my house. So our first agenda is that the house of God should prosper. When you meet unbelievers, the way they talk about the church. You want God to build a house for you, but you don't want God's house to be built. And you want God. Seek ye first his kingdom. There be meat in my house. And prove me now here with. Say yes, the Lord of hosts. If I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Look at verse 12. Wow. And I will rebuke the devourer. Woo. Oh, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Which means that everyone who doesn't tithe, you will work, but the benefit will not stay with you. Because there is a demon that comes to destroy your resources. So please, secure your life. And this tithing is in two groups. Personal tithe to open your personal open heavens. And if you are in business, you pay business tight to open the heavens for the business. If I've been shouting this thing, shouting, people know the hill. This church pay tight. I pay my personal tight. The church pay it tight. Every businessman here, he said, I will open the window. So we have personal open windows and business open windows. The first tight that Abraham paid was a business tight. The Bible said Abraham gave him tithes of all. Who are the all? The 318 soldiers in his house. He paid tithe on them. Recently, a businessman in America who doesn't go to church sent somebody to the church and he told the pastor, I've, I've, I've seen somewhere that when you pay tithe, God will open the heavens. So this man began to tithe his business. He doesn't go to church. Began to tithe his business. Began, ah, the heavens began to open. He said, ah. Now that I don't go to church, I sit outside the church and prosper like this. What about if I enter the house and I become a member? Baba Oedipo gave a testimony of one day they were in church. A Muslim man ran into the church. He said, Pastor, I need a tight card. Barricade! The pastor looked at the way the man addressed and he said, um, go, to the, go to the office. He, he, said, he said, please, I'm not a Christian. The pastor didn't hear. He said, go to, he said I say I'm not a Christian. So I said, what are you doing here? I said, I've learned that there's something called tight. When they pay, they prosper. God's laws are universal laws. He was in the mosque paying tight in the church. My God. Put your hands together for the Lord. And you are in the church. You are paying your tight in Coca-Cola company. In Domi every evening. He gave you ten. Give me one. The one, two. Too dangerous. Tell your friend, be a tighter and things will not be tight for you. <laughs> Number three, sacrificial offerings for projects. Sacrifices for kingdom projects. Mm -hmm. Psalm 50 verse 5. Gather my sins together with me. Those that have made a covenant with me through sacrifice. So every believer who is given to sacrifice, you have a covenant of prosperity with God. It's a covenant of prosperity. Me, I will never be poor. I will say it whether you like it or not. It doesn't make any difference. The reason why I can say that God, the covenant does not fail. The covenant not fail. Gather my 
tie things together. So from time to time, you give precious things. For instance, now we are going, we are buying a land. The other time we checked, the man has added 30,000 to the old price that he gave us. But nevertheless, we need that this thing, we are going to get it. So what, am, what, what are you going to contribute? Somebody gave $40,000. Somebody gave 30000 Somebody gave 10000 When will you give your own? So those of you that took the envelope and they're still hanging in your wardrobe. We need, to, we need to get that land for God. Everything we are buying for church, we are not going to take it when we die. We'll leave it here. Our children and children. But we are making a statement that once upon a time, God was in this place. And as you build for him, he will build multiple houses for you in the name of Jesus. So sacrifices. Christianity without sacrifice doesn't work. And if you are not given to sacrifice, you'll never have a financial breakthrough. Sacrifice gives you a boom, boom, breakthrough. Say boom, boom, breakthrough. Boom! Number four, giving to the poor. Everybody must give to somebody lower than you. Proverbs 28, 27. Solomon is teaching us. Proverbs 28, 27. What does he say? He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack. I like this statement. Akofa shall not lack. He that giveth to the poor shall not lack. But he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. Number. The next number. Parental honor. Everybody sitting here put your parent on monthly budget. If you can give them 10 cities, whatever. Maybe I'm teaching you. Put your parent on monthly budget. No matter the amount, send something monthly. Let it be your lifestyle. Because you need their goodwill to survive. You won't do it for, nobody will do it for you. And don't say your parents are rich. God didn't say give to rich parents. There is a reason why he said that. Proverbs 30, 10. He said there is a generation that do not honor their parents. Very, 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 Proverbs 30, verse 11. 11. There is a generation that cursed their father and do not bless their mother. Somebody shout, I'm not one of them. Shake your head and say, I'm not one of them. Take your head out of that generation. So there is a group of people who don't care about their parents. And yet Ephesians 5, Ephesians 6, 2 and 3 says, Honor your father and your mother. Mm -hmm. Which is the first commandment we promise. That it may be well with thee, that thou may live long on earth. Good well. Phil, are you there? Good well. Oh, my, my, I'm a student. You are a student. Start sending your father Momo 10, 10 cities. They may not even need it, but that wisdom will cause them to bless you. Don't wait until you are. Many never did that. Today they are down because they were blessed without security. Parental blessing secures blessing. That it may be well with you. He said, all thy days on earth. Parental honor. Put them on monthly budget. Send what you are not the only one that was wise. Do what wisdom says, and you come out of financial struggles. Some of you are offended. My father they didn't look after me. When he said that, did he say give it to the father who look after you? Let's read it back. Let's see what he said. <laughs> Ephesians 6. <laughs> we are all reading it. Those of you who your father didn't look after you, let's read it together. <laughs> Honor thy father and thy mother. Did he say your father that took you to school? No. That agreed to your marriage? No. Abba. People will not simply obey. All our struggles, some of them are, are self-made struggle. Self-made struggle. You're not talking about what your father did. Do you know what they did to me? My father used to give my school chop money to my sister. And she would go and chop it. My sister from another woman. And I told my father, this girl is chopping my money. The next day she will, will give it to him again. I learned faith. I learned faith. And yet when my father said he needed a wheelchair, I was the one who provided it. We don't prosper by magic. We don't prosper by magic. You follow covenant laws. Are you hearing me here? 
You follow covenant. You see, those of you, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't, I don't want to insult you all. <laughs> but if you want to prosper, follow what Solomon is teaching. There is a generation that despises their parents. And you will never do well, I'm telling you. Many have tried it, and they didn't like the results. Do it. They are in the village. Wherever they are today, Momo will help you. Forget about the Yilevi. Yilevi, my foot. There's nothing inside the Yilevi. They, they are just using it to whatever. There's nothing. What, my wife, somebody, my, somebody did a work for my wife, and he's supposed to pay him 500 Ghana. The guy is all the way to Kaswa. He said, can I send you the money by Momo? He said, no, hey. That is... So when my wife told me, so I asked him, but how much is the little? He said the guy says six, six cities. I said, no, 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 no. No, no, no. It cannot be six cities. Let me check the calculation. No, he says 60, 60 cities. I said, no, 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 no. That thing is 1.5. So, so when I check it was six cities, so I asked the guy, if somebody even take Okada from Circle to Kaswa, how much will it cost? So no matter which way you, you, you look at it, Ilevi is still the best. <laughs> I deliver you from the fear of Ilevi. Fear. It's better than putting your money in your pocket for somebody to steal. Don't listen to these radio people. Sometimes they don't explain the thing well. And even when you send from some, some uh, up to 100 Ghana, they don't charge. And those that send up to 100 Ghana are in the majority. And yet they confuse them. Mama and Pato, Tomato, Simon say, Hey, Mr. Wo, Mr. We live it. Let the fear go. Let the fear go. Let the fear go. Lift your hand and say, There is nothing there. There's nothing there. But after all, those even that brought the Lord, nobody will escape. All of us are inside. Nobody will escape. Okay, you are, you are an empty. Don't you have brothers and sisters? Forget about all these kind of things. My God. Send them Momo. Send them what? To protect your blessing. Many carry blessings that are unprotected. Because no old person is praying for them. Shagalima Lama Lozevrahan de Maya. Now, prophet's offering. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 19. <laughs> Boy, as I'm standing, I'm barricaded with prophets offering. There are people that pray for me are powerful than those criticizing me. Their criticism won't go anywhere. Their critics, those that are saying, may God bless you, are people who see Elijah and Jeremiah. You can eat in me and curse me. Yeah. Take heed to thyself that thou forsake not the Levite as long as thou livest upon the face of the earth. The day I saw the scripture, I say, my God. Prophet's offering. How to remember your man of God from time to time. From time to time. My God. Anytime I get some money, I divide the money. Send some to my prophets. My God. Your, your, your curse is like pure water on a rock. The people that are saying, God bless you. God bless you. Are more dangerous than all the witches and wizards in Ghana. My friend. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Galatians 6 says, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacher in all things. There is a blessing from the prophet. Now, he, he, he said, the, the, the one that is teaching you communicate to him from it is an instruction. And what will he do in your life? Matthew 10 41 and 42. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, hey. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receive a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Verse 42. Woo! Whosoever shall give to drink one of these little ones a cup of cold water. Not hot water. Cold water. Cold water to quench his stand. I say unto you, he shall not lose a reward. So there is a reward of your prophet that you need to get. I didn't write the Bible. I came to find it. I came to find it. One day I wanted to go and buy watch and do some shopping for myself. I go to check. They say, let's honor the prophet. I said, what is that? I've never heard before. All the money I've collected, 1,500. I had a budget for Sunday, Sunday market. Sunday market is very cool. So I was going for Sunday market after church. 
I'm going to buy a shoe. I'm going to buy two white shirts. I'm going to buy a briefcase. And I'm going to buy myself a gold watch. My God. And then the man of God started the offering from 1,500. As a man of God, are you using Google Map? That's all the money that I have in my pocket. The, a man, the richest man in our church, those days stood in front. I joined the man standing in front. My money was in my pocket. The man was giving a pledge, but my own was in my pocket. Ah, yeah, yeah. I heard the choir say, this, this student, does he think he, he's joking? I almost swallowed all of them up. I was, I was dying whilst I was standing in front of them. I gave all that money to, to the man of God. Today, am I going to buy shoe anymore? Zow. Am I going to buy that gold watch anymore? Zow. Am I going to buy white, uh, white shirt anymore? Zow. What I gave to that prophet is taking care of me today. Put your hands together for the Lord. You see, follow wisdom. Don't li- now let me warn you. Don't listen to people talking outside. Oh. They don't know the Bible. They don't know the Bible. And no human wisdom can beat the wisdom in this book. Forever, O oh God, your word is certain. When you become a chartered giver, God gives you seed to sow. Second Corinthians 9, 7, and 11. There's more than be a giver. Givers prosper. Givers. One day a woman build a house for a man of God. He said, what do you want? He said, that we've not had a baby in the house. He said, as long as the Lord lives, Woo! Breakthrough. 2 Corinthians um, 9, 7 to 11. Every man according to us his purpose in his heart, let him keep, not gradually or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. For God is able to make all grace. He's talking about givers. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That he always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. My God, as it is written, he has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. Now, he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed so and increase the fruit of your righteousness so that what? Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes us. So in, what he's saying that the giver will be enriched in everything. I pray for you. Every poverty you carry from your father's house, poverty dies out of your life as you follow God's wisdom. So the problem is lack of wisdom, human mind. I read something from the book of a community. My friend, what are you talking about? He said there is a wisdom that is not found in the land of the living. My God. Some of these things you can never understand. But the open destinies. The open destinies. The open destinies. A man of God had a son who was sick. They pray, 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 pray. The boy was in here. One day he said, Lord, I don't even have anything to give you. He said, open your wardrobe. He had six brand new suits. Six brand new suits. He carried all of them. Brought it to church. Dropped them on the altar. By the t- he said, Pastor, by the time he got home, that deadly disease has died out of the child. My God. My God. Give me the student job. He said, For by my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Somebody put your hands together for wisdom. Man of God, why are you preaching with such confidence? Because it works. <laughs> because it works. Stop jealousy, people. What kind of car is he driving? Is your car lost? What kind of shoe is he wearing? Is your shoe lost? Do what people are doing before you talk about them. Do. How can you be around? Somebody is around your area, in your cell, in your church. He doesn't go to school. And you, you, you watch them? How much is some people's school fees? Little boy. Primary school school fees. But some Christians who speak in tongues and bypass. Sharabakataya. Rekataya. May the Lord be with you. Rekataya. And the Lord said, I left you here to be with them. I left you here to be with them. If Christians understand giving, there won't be one poor person in the church. Do you know why? Because there is an anointing in the church to make everybody poor. But how to connect is giving. How to connect is giving. How to connect is giving. All the givers, lift your hands. I see wisdom making you the most prosperous person in your father's eye. Give the Lord a shout of praise in this place. Now, Seven keys, number four, savings and investment. Ecclesiastes 11, 1 to 3. 
No matter how small your money is, a certain percentage maybe must be stayed all the time. There must be an untouchable part of your money all the time. Solomon is teaching us. Cast thy bread upon the waters. Now, you see, people think this one is about giving, but look at something. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Investment. Many days. Give, now, this is how you know. Give a portion to seven and a portion to eight. Put some in Coca-Cola shares. <laughs> Put some in Elevi shares. Elevi has shares. Put some in Echo Bank shares. Go to sleep and forget about it after many days. Now, the reason why many are poor, they want to be rich today, today. The Bible says, "Wealth gotten by he that make it has to be rich. You know, three days ago, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, real, the real rich people are those who gather little by little. I said, what are you saying? Little by little. You see, you see, um, um, you see on this one, no, re, re, even if you have a small box and you, you only put coins every evening when you return, one day when you open the coins, you will see what is going to happen to you. Tell your friends, save and invest, save and invest, save and invest. Now, let me finish my scripture. Give a portion to seven, also to eight. For thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. Mm -hmm. If the clouds be full of rain, the maturity of your investment, woo, they empty themselves upon the earth. If, now, this is how you, you get to know it. If the tree fall toward the south, not toward the south, in the place where the tree fall, there it shall be. When they were investing, you were chopping. So when they are harvesting, you not go harvest. You open your mouth, tell it, so water will come. <laughs> ask your friend, do you have a savings account? I say, ask them, I'm giving you permission. Ask them, do you have a savings account? You get, you chop, you get, you chop, you get, you buy credit. Hello? Ayo, 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 ayo. Data, ayo, ayo. Checking news who have not called you. Out of the blessing that God gives you, save some for harvest. Savings is the wisdom of the ant, and we are told to learn from the ant. Look at Proverbs 6, 6, and 8. Every, yes, it doesn't matter how small the money is. Huh, you can choose to give your tithe 10% and save 10% and spend the 8%. Spend the 8. Save 10. Tithe 10. The rest, you can use it to spread all your friends. <laughs> hmm? Go to the hand, that's like a consider her ways. Which, which way is he saying we should consider? Seven. Hmm? They have no God or overseer. But, right, but the verse eight, he provide her meat in the summer. Now you won't see it. Put it in amplifier. You are going to see it. When you, the verse eight is talking about investing for tomorrow. Hmm? She prepares her food in the summer and brings in her provision for food for the winter in the harvest. So he saved in the days of abundance and brought it out in the days of scarcity. And brought it out in the days of scarcity. My God! Instead of having savings account, it is a loan account that you have. Loan account. People borrow when they have no business with borrowing. But they want to live above their means. Me, I don't even eat cake that is above my size. <laughs> and since I started preaching about the wisdom of the snake, something even came. Ask my wife last day. It's, it's only this little thing. I say I'm a master of contentment. I'm learning. You know, you may think I'm preaching, but the thing has entered me so much that you give me half Coca-Cola. Praise God! I'm, I'm going to drink it. I don't live to eat. I eat to live. Some of you, when you get a watch, until you spread the thing top. <laughs> Two X. Three Wally. <laughs> if I went and watch a seller see you come and say, Madam, Madam, 30 cities is coming. But when you just drop the 30 cities, bam! And they start arranging the thing like a birthday cake. <laughs> My God. They say, Madam, today there's no pair. Today, where is the Gary? Madam, give me everything. Give me. So, when you land here, watch yourself. The bear yet this baby, I'll be the Abba. I'll draw the dinam. When will you be ready? Why 
will you be rich? Hey. She prepared her food. Is, no matter how much little you have, leave a portion for tomorrow. Man of God, do you do that? I, what I don't do, I don't talk. What I don't do, I don't talk. I will be a hypocrite. Hmm? If I don't do that one way, you know, this, this thing that you see, the first one, I use my money to pay. Yes, I took all my investment. I used to pay this one, the first one that was in the church. I didn't tell anybody. Because the pressure starts. At that time, we are building everybody. Kuga, you are my testimony. Eh? I went with him to the man. I told the woman, give me all my money. I said, Pastor, I said, why? When I was putting the money, did you, did you ask me why? Yes. So some people think that somebody is looking for your money to chop. It's not me. It's not me. There is nothing I use my money to buy in this church that I collected it back. Nobody does that here. You know it. We are looking for money to sow for God. Because in heaven, I must also build my account. And I will also for Your account will be empty. What will I get? What will I get? What will I get? What will I get? Yes. All the stones in the church, I did it with my personal money. Everywhere you see a stone, no church money. After all of us are giving, I also have the one. Because I must also, don't let me say things that, I'm, I'm just saying this testimony to encourage you. All the stones you see at the car park, I did it myself. Myself. I, I, when I called the guy, I said, dude, this one is not church. If you like, go and check the car check and If you see anything about stones, and it's the most expensive part. I must also, I must also contribute to the. I'm not blessed for nothing. I tell you. And there are people who are dangerous givers in the church. Most of the machines you see, one one people bought it. You can't buy a machine, but where is your two cities? Nobody is blessed for nothing. Blessings don't jump on people. You do something to be blessed. Oh, yeah, my in secret in Yego, or the end was on Yanko. Tell your friend, be conscious of investment. Be conscious of investment. Two types of investment. Number one, all kingdom promotion givings are investment. Anytime you give to church, you give to people, you give your tithe, it's investment. You find it after many days. And then number two, invest in the money market. Invest in the money. One bank bitch of my money, it will almost discourage me, but uh, I'm forgiving them. It's not, it's not Namwano. <laughs> the bank name begins with E. E. <laughs> he said we should buy investment. 15 years now, Kobo Craft not got it. But every time I give a seed in church, woo! God is a faithful banker. Tell your friend, God is a faithful banker. No matter what happens, always save some money, little by little. Exodus 23, 30. Look at it. Yes. All the wives save money. Don't say my husband gave me you. Ahow. 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 Hey. One day a woman invited me to come and educate the house. Amazing testimony. So we stood in the house. We were dedicating. I don't know if we were there. Kuma said, I went with somebody. The husband too came for the dedication. When we finished, it happened that it's chop money that the woman took his small, small. So he built a huge house. The husband was surprised. So he said, <laughs> even though <laughs> my wife didn't tell me, but this is a good thing. Let's clap our hands for her. Chop money. He used to build eight bedroom house. The, the man never saw it until the day of dedication. With paros in the house. <laughs> I dedicated it. It's not somebody's story. Yes. But you, when you take the chop money, red shoe, blue shoe, move shoe. After some time, colorless shoe. <laughs> yes. You want to give my wife money, it doesn't pay me because she uses it well, well. Yes. Prodica, prodica, prodica woman. Because a man more than 
I, I release special wisdom on every woman here. You will build a house yourself. Yourself. I didn't hear amen. I'm standing here saying this. Tell somebody, save, 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 save. Invest, 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 invest. Put your money somewhere. Forget about it. You shall find it after many days. That's key number four. Let's conclude. What is number five here now? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, I need to show you this scripture. Exodus 23, 30. He said, by little and little, I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased. So Adams, you see, you can increase by little. By, everybody say little by little. Yes. Some of you are not saying it. Say little by little. Yes. You see politicians, they want to boom. Suck our boys. Boom. When the thing also is going, it goes aja. Finish. Little by little. I would rather until thou be increased. So increase comes later. But start the building project. Stop saying how much is the price of cement. If that was what your father was asking, home build a house. Cement will never, the price will never go down. You see, there are certain facts you have to abrace yourself. So you don't ask stupid questions. Master, do you know the price of cement? When was it during your mother's days? Start. God will back you up. Say little by little. You say you want to have a wedding. Buy it. When I was going to marry, I went to Newtown. The first thing I bought a Bible. That's all my money could buy. Then one day I bought a briefcase. Then one day I bought what? Little before I saw the briefcase was full. My God. Then I bought a top of suit. My wife brought me a material. I went to sew. Hang it there. Little by little. Somebody gave me uh, non-alcoholic drink. I kept it. One day it will make a meaning. Now if I drink it, it's useless drinking. Little by little. Somebody gave me a piece of gold. I kept it. That's what I used for my first wedding. We are not here by chance. Boy. Say little by little. I see all my choruses becoming melonia. Little by little. I see every holy healer Becoming so rich little by <laughs> number five, prudence. God's wisdom. Prudence. Proverbs 8 12. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 8 12. Do not wisdom cry and understanding put a voice. Give me verse 12, boy. Mm -hmm. Hurry up, I'm getting excited. I wisdom dwell with prudence. Prudence means to be sensible, to be sagacious, to be shrewd. Hey. <laughs> to be um, frugal. That is somebody who can manage later. A man that uses resources with sense, he thinks deeply before he uses money. The only time I don't think is giving to God. That one I don't think. Because I want him to give me a breakthrough without thinking. Shagayos. Fight wastage. Tell your friend, fight wastage. Luke 15, 13. The prodigal son, the Bible says he wasted his substance with prodigal living. You are selling in the market. Any food that passes. Your mouth never rest. Sue your help. Pokey help. <laughs> if you want to go say, my men patch the other son, the other out on. Everything is eatable, my friend. Well, did you did you have a can hold my baram patch the other out on your diana? Tell your friend, be delivered, be delivered. <laughs> That's not wisdom, man. And not many days after the younger gathered all together and took his journey to a far country and there wasted his substance with righteous living, wasteful living. Some young men, when they see girls, their spirit has come. They say, Lucy, it's a long time I gave you something. Please go to the shop and take one more, then take one for your friend, man. Take one for your friend. 
<laughs> you and prosperity will be very far away. A waster today is a beggar tomorrow. A waster. The waster and the lazy man, they have equal destiny. They are twins. One will not work. Another one will get you wasted. Manage well your finance. Budget your money. Avoid impulse buying. Avoid loose life. Loose life. Ake, ake, ato, ato, edi, edi, apa. Proverbs 89. A waster and a lazy man. They have equal destiny. They went to the same secondary school. <laughs> he also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. Some modern guests are kind of say, I don't cook and leave some of the soup behind. I eat fresh meat. Are you a lion? <laughs> Ask your friend, are you a lion? It's lions. Only li all the animals is lions that eat fresh meat. They don't eat yesterday's food. Are you a lion? What? We used to cook banku and keep it for seven days. Oh! We put it in the fridge. <laughs> By the time you charge it, that thing flow, 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 flow. <laughs> Man of God, you know my level. I don't eat Gary. You don't eat Gary. Go to Nigeria. It is their cheapest meat. Poverty is looking for you. Wester. There's no wester who comes to church here. Somebody say amen. Close all the leakages in your life and guide your spendings with discretion. Prudence will make you a high flyer. Isaiah 52, 13. Spend with discretion. Calculate. Measure. My God. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. Be prudent. My God. Some people, when they beg you money, don't give them. Yes, I will add that one to my preaching. <laughs> if you see the same person, keep going, he coming, keep going, he coming, keep going. Work, he won't work. work. By the time you want to. <laughs> Wasters. So, exercise discretion. Number six, the fear of God. God doesn't want you to waste the fear of God. Lo what is the fear of God? The fear of God simply is loving God and hating evil. Solomon prospered by loving God. That's the first key. First key is to say, Solomon loved the Lord. He didn't love the girls. He loved the Lord. The Bible says, by the means of a holish woman, a man is reduced to a piece of bread. Slay queens. They slay your resources. You can't practice sin and prosper with God. Sin corrupts wisdom. And when wisdom is corrupted, wealth disappears because wisdom is the source of wealth. Proverbs 3.33. Let's quickly, our time is up. Proverbs 3.33. Mm -hmm. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blessed the habitation of the just. That's us. So the more righteous you are, God blesses your house. When Solomon moved from loving God to loving women, he came down flat. A lot of Christians, they live very holy. When God starts blessing them, then now they begin to see the difference between a slim girl and a fat girl. <laughs> when they were broke, Prosperity comes with attraction. Be careful and manage your attractions. Everything in skirt is no good. Everything in trouser is not quiet. Be careful. Be careful. First Kings chapter 11 verse 1. Back in Solomon loved many strange women. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of Moabite, Ammonites, Edom, Zedon, Abba, Solo. <laughs> verse 4, verse 4, verse 4, verse 4, verse 4, verse 4. For it came to pass 
when Solomon was old, that his wife turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. My God. Verse 6. Mm. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as David his father did. Verse 9. 9. 9. And the Lord was angry with Solomon. Somebody say, Lord, don't get angry with me. Because his heart was, has turned away from God, which, which has appeared to him twice. Verse 11. Look at what happened. Everything came down. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, thou hast not kept my covenant and my status, which I have commanded thee. I will surely rend the kingdom from thee. Oh, Pastor Solomon. Yeah, my God. And I will give it to another. May your riches not be transferred from you to another person. Let me warn you. Everything you have is given for you as a trust. It's not yours. A man can receive nothing except it is given to him from above. Don't play your ear. You see, people who don't know God, it is nah, 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 nah. This is nah, 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 nah. It's not yours. So. He said, I will give it to another person. The fear of God is your guarantee for lasting wealth. Fear evil, and you will be rich for a very long time. Proverbs 8, 18. Durable riches follow those who fear God. Now look at another thing that follows those who fear God. When you fear God, your wealth will stay for a very long time. Job 1. Woo! What's the difference between the fear of God and blessings? Job chapter 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. The man was perfect and upright. One that feared God and steward evil. Verse 3. Verse 3. His substance was also 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 she asses. A very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. So the fear of God preserved your wealth. Now, if you want God to preserve whatever He has given you, run away from evil, steal it, cheat it. Fighting over properties that are not yours. Zachariah 5, the curse of the Lord is in the house of a thief. Everyone that steals, pastor, bishop, whatever your title, a thief has no future with God. No matter on the title under which you steal. The curse of the Lord is in the house of a thief. And it says, shall enter into the house of a thief. And it shall into the house of him that swear falsely. And it shall remain in the midst of his house. And it shall consume it with the timber and everything. The timber and everything. If you want bottle of Coca-Cola, don't steal. It can wreck your destiny. Anytime you steal, you reduce your age by 15 years. Yeah. Say yes, a man of God. And you open your team will be Those that use crooked means. You got the word crookedly, you lose it crookedly. I met a man who stole a lot of people's money and went and deposited with, with his friend in abroad. The next time he picked his phone, he called, Hello? Crank, 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 nobody pick. He flew to that place. The man has also left the city. No address, no trace. You got it by stealing, he collected it by stealing. Somebody shout, Ayeka. Tell your friend that will never be your story. That will never. And tell him, gather little by little by little. One day you'll be a very wealthy man. And I see me talking to wealthy, wealthy believers, kingdom believers, shakers. Somebody shout at me for that prophetic word. Poverty not go stay in your house forever. I see you conquering poverty. You are moving from whatever to whatever. We didn't have food to eat. We didn't steal. That man that we were selling the shoes for, the shoes were so much that we could steal somebody. Never. Never. Sometimes after we sell everything, we give us only one one. They say, ah! Because all that we, we, we wanted, we could have done is we bring, we call our brother and say, Charlie, can come like, come and act as if you are buying a shoe. And then we pass and we pass and we pass. We didn't do that. Maybe it will have affected our future today. Listen to me. Your future is very great. Don't sell it cheaply. Tell your friend, your future is very great. Don't sell it cheaply. <laughs> Finally, faithfulness. Tell somebody, be faithful. faithful. 
To be faithful means to be constant. Whatever brought you to where you are, keep on doing it. Don't shift ground. Proverbs 28, 20. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. The Yasmin is singing, singing. Then he buys a Mercedes. Ah, now he's no more in the choir. How many years have been Pastor Ness? Many years. Pastor Prince, many years. Pastor Savior, many years. Pastor Adam, donkey years. They don't change. And if you will not change, God will not change his blessing. I've been in the, in the, in the waters. People will come and create confusion. Yes, they are around. That's what it means, faithful, constant. You said you will be here, be here. It's not as soon as Philo start getting money. Mm, I'm no more part of event committee. May that thing I said, Tofia Kwayu. <laughs> Tell somebody, don't shift ground. Don't. Or maybe Pastor Prince now goes to preach in America. When he comes, he says, hey, you know, we are not like before, man of God. <laughs> When you see wealth, be consistent in practicing all the wisdom kings that brought you wealth. Titan sacrificing. Faithfulness is the key to everlasting fruitfulness. Amata, don't shift ground. Don't shift ground. There is a very sad story in the Bible about a king called Asa. Go home and read 2 Chronicles 15 and 16. This young guy started so well, the Bible said his heart was perfect with the Lord. God began to bless him. God began to bless Chapters, so I can't put them. God began to bless him. Then after some time, Isa had a little problem. He went to see an outside doctor. And the Lord told him, Isa, why have you left me to go and shift some of the, 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 the 16, 12 says that Isa was diseased in his feet. Yet, even in his disease, he did not seek after God. Some people stop bornness, can't can stop bornness. The thing is not working. They are still there. Esa in the 39 year of his reign was diseased in his feet. Until his disease was a silly grave. Yet, this is the place that pained me. In his disease, he sought not the law, but to the physicians. Hold somebody's hand and shake him and say, don't shift ground. Always, once a quarrister. Hey, I didn't hear you. Once a quarrister. Once a communion steward. <laughs> Look at that being a man, a man here. I was with them when they, they used to be in school. And they did. The day has gone somewhere. Forever to forever. That's what we call faithfulness. Many shift grounds. Now I used to be a member of Holy Hill. Now I'm a parliamentarian. Oh, I don't have time. I'm going to, to change. Foolishness on rampage. Foolishness on rampage. How do you sit in a plane? And it takes off with a certain degree of energy. Then when you get there, you say, let's switch off the engine. You are coming down. This one, we don't call it you are coming down. You are dying down. That's the case of many people. That's why faithfulness is the last key. Whatever brought you to where you are, continue to do it, and you maintain equilibrium. You maintain what? Equilibrium. I know. Today you are driving a car that uses electricity. You are no more a Sunday school teacher. Shifting grounds. Hold somebody's hand and pray for him that you will not shift ground. Look at that human get here. Look at Mr. Takuma. Manager of the international company. With all these managers, they come to church earlier than many of you here. <laughs> At all, so. <laughs> Beg somebody, please, don't shift ground. Don't shift ground. Be faithful. Whatever brought you to where you are, continue to do it. Don't tell me you went to school in America, so you have come. Many shift ground. Once a soul winner, <laughs> Woo. lift your hands to the Lord. Oh, some trip, some, some points. <laughs> well, let's complete this thing now. How do I continue walking in this wisdom? Number one, pray for grace. Tell them, pray for grace. Hebrews 4.19, let us come boldly. 
You say, Lord, all that I'm teaching, give me grace to be a tither. Give me grace to be faithful. Give me grace to be prudent. Lord, I need grace. The devil will make sure you shift around. You say, now, maybe I'm Richard, I'm my pastor. Now we are counting millions. He can't come here and be commanding us like that. Shifting grounds. First, the other pastors came to church. They number one. We went to circle. You see, it's amazing. The place we came to look for the church, you know, at that time. You know, that's where today we are. It's just across here. Many, how many years ago? 13 years ago. I drove with him in the car. We came. Till today, 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 wherever we go, he's the one driving. He's not shifting ground. Ask your friend, are you shifting ground? That's the problem. Faithfulness. To be there. Number two, pray to stay humble. James 4, 10. Eh? God is saying to help people in you. What is he saying? He said, James 4, 10, humble yourself in the sight of God. He shall lift you. You will keep going up and going up. When we give you something to do in there, don't come with excuses. Oh, my friend. <laughs> Number three, pray and stay holy. Proverbs 13, 6. Proverbs 13 says, today's message is a little bit hot, but let's swallow it all. Righteousness keepeth him that is upright in the way, but wickedness overthrow the sinner. My baby, once you stay where God wants you to be, righteousness will keep you. Will keep you. People that have it today, they don't have it tomorrow. They shift their grounds. They shift their grounds. Finally, pray to stay in the way. Help people stay in the way. You will always be the same. Even if you become a trilonia, the same, the same, the same, like John D. Rockefeller. An usher forever, the first American billionaire, dies as a chief usher in the church. How many modern day people can stay? So, what do you mean by me coming to open church door? Brother, you are shifting grounds. <laughs> Sister, don't shift grounds, I beg you. Psalm 119, verse 98. Let's close. Pray to stay in the word. If you keep hearing the message, how will you shift ground? One thing that has kept me is hearing of messages. Always hearing my spiritual father's voice. Listening to every day. Thou through thy commandment has made me wiser than my enemies. For they are ever with me. So when you become wiser, you become wealthier. Lift your hands to the Lord. And begin to thank him. Did you hear something today? Yes. Akofa, did you hear something? You are sleeping. Yes. <laughs> Apostle Madonado, he said, hey, don't sleep on me. Nobody is sleeping. Lift your hands. Pray for grace. More importantly, my last point. Because God will bless everybody. Shifting grounds. If my daughter Daniela now start getting international business. Now you United Nations. Now he's dining with president. Say, you see, Isabella, he mentioned my name in Canada. I told her, I said, hey, you remember me? He said, oh, Papa, I can't forget. <laughs> Sweet father, no girl forget you. <laughs> Will you suffer so with you suffer so for me? With. Lift up your hands. Only one prayer. Don't shift ground. Don't shift ground. That's people's problem. The blessing there to come. Look at this lady. Never shift ground. Don't shift ground, though. Lift your hands and pray. Now you are not married. God gave you a wife for shifting ground. You travel your first international journey. So I've left the choir. <laughs> One girl too, Pastor Faith. He can't lead open prayer in the church. When they give, he said, I, 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 my level, like, I don't lead prayer. I said, yeah. Go and lead yourself. <laughs> People shift ground. Though. Pray for faithfulness. Lord, make me faithful. And you see, Faithfulness is the key to fruitfulness. Once you are faithful, Pastor Kobe, you will be fruitful. Faithfulness. Everybody pray. Pray for God to help you. Your prosperity will keep on from generation to generation. This is my girl. Follow me since school days. Never shift ground. From generation to generation to generation. I saw Bishop Salifu 1997. Out till today, I'm still in contact. We go. We talk, what happens to him is not my problem. It, I, I can't shift ground. A faithful man will abound with blessings. 
if you were a husband here, when you married your wife, you didn't have money. Now money came. You are shifting ground. Akosia Kuma has become second. I cross that girl out of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything that will bring your life down. I'm a man of God. I'm not a politician. I don't have time to go to church. You know, I, I have a lot of business meetings to attend. Business what? You are shifting grounds. To be faithful is to be fruitful. And faithfulness means be constant. 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 Solomon shifted grounds. The thing shifted. It all depends on you. I see God raising a lot of melonies in the church. Lift up your hands. Everything that makes you struggle, I cause it out of your life in the name of Jesus. This week, God is opening a mega door for somebody. I release favor, 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 financial favor. Somebody said, it has rained. I couldn't go to church. You are shifting grounds. If you are going to write exams, you have gone. Don't shift grounds. Kaka, don't shift grounds. If you don't shift grounds, once you maintain, that's the prayer we have to pray. Father, help me to stay. Don't shift grounds. Whatever brought you to where you are, if it is humility that brought you, keep it all. <laughs> yes. Mercy. A faithful man. Faithfulness means constant. Constant. You said you believe in him. You believe in tithing today. You tithe forever. So you don't become an S champion. My God. Don't shift grounds. And the blessing will continue. And continue. And continue. Everyone here suffering poverty. Today, poverty has expired out of your life. Pray to God. I don't know what you heard. Just pray. Just pray. I have two more things to do, then we're going to be closing. Some instruction the Lord gave me. We are just going to do it right now. Now, a few days ago, the Lord instructed me. He said, You are going to do altar seed three consecutive times. So we started on Tuesday. Tuesday, today, and next Tuesday. Allow people to plant special seeds because I want to do special things in their life. This is not pledge, it's now. Anybody that can give a thousand Ghana or 500, come to the altar and drop your seed. If you don't have a thousand or 500, wait for me, I'm coming. <laughs> this is not offering, no. I don't want to see you bringing offering envelope. I'm not calling for offering. We will do the offering. I need people to sow special seed, thousand or five hundred. You have that money in your pocket now. You are the one I want. God is going to do something special. Some of, some of you, the money you brought, you have an agenda to go and do after church. <laughs> Woo! So, take that seed. Come and drop it on the altar. Thousand Ghana, five hundred. Come from wherever you are. I'm talking to those who have it. If I'm not talking to, no problem. Just don't, don't be worried. This is what you spoke to me, and I will do the last one on Tuesday. You know I don't do this. Something special is coming. When you are coming to church, bring money on. <laughs> Come and do your lover show. Show to your lover. Yes, man. Don't keep the money for anointed rice. Yes. Prove your love to God. I want to see love. I cannot go to church and give a thousand. <laughs> what is one thousand? Oh, be the man again. I shouldn't say one. I don't want to know what they heard about there now. Can I say? Thank God. You have two hundred. Come. Two hundred. Two hundred Ghana. This is Sunday morning. I don't do these things when I come to church. I will just say offering time. But he spoke to me. He said, do it three times. Something will happen. I'm God's servant. I'm there. God bless you. Don't give the money to anybody. You stand and come by yourself. Just drop it on the altar. 200. 200 or 100 gamma. Join, 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 join. You have that money. Stop whatever you are going to do. If you trust God that he blesses people. Yes. He's going to use it for something special. So, so when, I, when, he, when I heard it, and I came prepared myself. 
Did I give my money or not? That's mine. Did I sow some of the seed? Yeah. Because I don't know what is coming, but I must be a partaker. Stand up and walk. Walk among the people. Walk. Don't say you feel shy. No. No. Practice what will be. 100 Ghana City. Come from everywhere. Yes. Drop it on this altar. Something is going to happen. 50 Ghana City. When I finish, we'll take offering. This is not offering. I've explained to you. It's a special seed for a special blessing. 50 Ghana City. You have it. This is not pledge. You have it whilst we are sitting in the church. He said, give it to me. I will do something special. 50 Ghana City. I want to see people walking briskly. Going to the altar to drop the seed for their God. My God. Get me the operation, whatever, whatever, very fast. And we are going to be living. Next Tuesday, we are doing wisdom impartation. She said, the last one. 50 Ghana. You are sitting anywhere. You can give 20 Ghana as your special offering. I said, don't bring your offering envelope. Listen to instructions, please. Keep your offering envelope. That's, that's your duty. You are supposed to give offering. This is not it. Many of you, God will cause you to laugh some laughter. <laughs> you, you'll, never, you'll never know where the laughter is coming from. The liberal soul shall be made fat. Get excited when you get opportunity to sow for God. Sunday morning like this. Watch out this week what is going to happen. Explosion of financial breakthroughs. Some of you right now, your momo just caught some money right now. By the obedience of what we are saying. Yes. Just walk among the people. Nobody is watching your place. Just obey God. You want to give 20 Ghana. You want to give 10 Ghana. As a special seed. 10 Ghana. Stand up. Yes. Offering there. I will let the ushers come for it. If what you have is your offering, don't come to the front. This is something special. We will collect offering. He said, do this. I'm going to visit people with special blessings. Yes. The wisdom of giving always prospers people. So ushers, get ready. We are going to take offering. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. This is my offering. When I hear from God, I jump into it quickly. Watch out. Some of you will not get home. And you are going to receive a special phone call. My God. Those of you on television, you can give. You can give on, on the screen. You can give. You are watching from wherever abroad, wherever you are. You want to be part of the special offering. Yes. You can give. Anybody who wants to be part of a special offering, up to five cities, whatever you have, make sure it is not your Sunday offering. That I want to make it clear to you. Yes. One car and two cars are not the same. They are two different kind of things. When you pay him to the minute detail, you see the glory of God. You see the glory of God. And I want to remind you, everybody that took part of the dollar seed, yes, drop it. When you, when you finish, see Mr. Kwanza, please. He will explain to you what we have done so far. These are the people in charge of what we are doing. God bless you. God bless you. Somebody, five cities, is bringing 5,000 Ghana City before Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. I want to see you exercising your faith. When you hear a word, do what the word is saying. The hearing doesn't change you. The doing is what changes this morning. They're doing. They're doing. God bless you. God bless you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now lift your offering. Everybody lift your offering. Your offering is like a duty. Seed sowing is those who need specialized breakthrough. You go the extra mile. Oh Lord, I need this thing. And everybody who see this here, may the altar speak for you. In the name of Jesus. Father, bless our offering in Jesus' name. Oshes, can you move? Move like a whatever. 
move very fast um um operation biomes where are they is, is it with the ushers it's with them okay okay receive the offerings and um everybody sit down quietly i want to tell you something let me make an altar call now let's finish this one first we are embarking on a new soul winning mandate titled operation by armies executive city 37 said that said i will yet be required of the house of Israel to do it for them i will increase them as men as flock so everybody is supposed to win two souls between now and June 30th. Everything is on this sheet. In order for this to happen, you are supposed to list the name of eight souls. Name, phone number, name, phone number eight. And begin to pray on them. And try and redeem two out of the eight. According to the parable of Matthew chapter 13, the sower went to sow. Where do I get the source from? Your relations, your friends, your neighbors, your employees, and your co-workers. So, ushers, I want you to give everybody one operation by armies. Operation by armies. When you get a paper, turn it, you are going to sign. It's a covenant. <laughs> yes, me, take your own. Hey, be fast, be fast, be fast. Give it to them, they will share. So take your pen. We are going to sign here. I hear by covenant with God today with the Holy Ghost, helping me to stand in the gap, intercede for souls here and are listed, and pursue after them until each of them is saved and established in this church in the name of Jesus. Amen. Then you write your name. My name is Yasmin. Sign. Get your pen quickly. Turn the back. When you go home, take your time and list all the people in your office you want to save. Yes. Ushers, go, 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 go and get operation by armies. It's important than money. How many of you have gotten it? Operation by armies. <laughs> okay. Turn the back. Miss Nana, sign, sign. It's a covenant of establishing two people by June ending. Yes, you we won't sign it. Write your name and sign. I'm on Fosro. No. <laughs> Two souls. I'm tell, have you signed the covenant? Operation by armies. Find them anywhere in the drop drop, wherever you will find them. List the names and begin to pray. Draw them from your family, office, colleagues, wherever they are. You don't know them. You all go, hey, stop playing. Give them operation by always. Put your instruments down. No more playing song. Usher, run, run here. Operation by always. Run, madam. Eugene, is it finished? Oh, no, 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 no. Bring, bring it to them, bring it. No, 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 not this here. It's finished. Oh, how? Okay. Tell your friends, sign, sign, sign. We are going to lift it before God and make a vow. <laughs> Go for someone start a yes. <laughs> yes. It's a covenant. Operation by armies. Find them anywhere. Everybody lift it up. Lift it up. Say, Father, I hereby covenant with you and with the Holy Ghost, helping me to stand in the gap, to intercede for the souls I am going to list. I will pursue them until one of them is saved and established in this church. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Name and sign and put your date. <laughs> operation. Right now, operation by armies. The list there. Go. Where do you draw the souls from? Relations, friends, 
employees. I've shown you where to catch the people from six areas. You can't say you don't have an area. <laughs> Business partners. List their name. You have people in your office who are not born again. Please, don't watch them die. Philo, have you signed? Sign. And start working on them. By the end of this month, you have been able to save souls. Operation by all means, if you have to go and pound their fufu for them to be saved, you have to do it. Whatever means. That's what it means. Operation by all means. Amen. Now, you are here today. You are not born again. You want to give your life to Jesus. I want to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Wherever you are, lift up your hands. I'm going to pray with you. Somebody invited you. You came by yourself. Even though it's raining, you came. God bless you for coming. You used to go to church. Something happened. You couldn't go again. Now, Jesus wants to welcome you into the family of God. If you are here, you want to give your life to Jesus for the first time, or you backslided and you want to return back to God. Lift up your hands. I want to see you. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. Can you direct them for me? I can't see them properly. God bless you, sir. Come. Come here. I want to lead you to pray. I want to pray for you. Holy here. Let's keep clapping. Today it's ready. So people didn't go out early. So please, bear with us. Many people, they are now coming out. Well, the water in their area is now dry. It's almost everybody that came to church are those who have cars to come. Most Okada people, they didn't come. I see God giving everybody a four-wheel drive in the church. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Lift your hands, sir. God bless you. Say, Jesus, Jesus come, into my heart. come into my heart. I receive you, I receive you as, my Lord as my Lord and personal Savior. Personal Savior. Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I'm a sinner. Have mercy upon Have me. Have mercy upon me. Write my name, write my name in, the book of life. in the book of life. I receive you, Lord. I receive you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Two of you, come, 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 come. Oh, bring them here. Bring them here. Those of you who didn't pray that prayer, open your mouth closer. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. Please have mercy upon Please me. Please have mercy upon me. I repent of all my sins. Repent of all my sins. Today, Today I'm, born I'm born again. Lord, write my name, Lord, write my name in, the book of life. in the book of life. Fill me, Fill me with, your Holy Spirit, with your Holy Spirit. And I will serve you, will serve you all, the days all the days of my life. Of my life. Amen. Amen. Please, can you follow Pastor George quickly? Quickly, 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 quickly. If today is your first time coming to church, you've never been in church before, I would like to pray with you. First time coming to church, stand on your feet. I'm going to usher blessings over your life. First time. First time, you've never entered here before, you are watching. If you are watching on television, stand up in your room there. I'm going to pray for you. First time, God bless you, sir. You are welcome. God bless you. Keep on standing. My ushers are going to give you a gift. Keep on standing. Father, I bless my brothers. I bless my sisters. Whatever reason why they came, before they get home, give them a testimony. Bless them and bless the work of their hands and bless everything that they are doing. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, we would like to give you some information. So, pick your, 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 your whatever you brought and come to Pastor, uh, Apostle Kennedy here. Come to him. Come to him. Come to him. Come right now. He's going to give you some information. And that is going to be... You want to give your tithe. Run to the altar. Run to the altar. First time, come this way. Come see Pastor Kennedy. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You want to give your tithe. Remember, if you don't tithe, God has no business. Supernatural prosperity doesn't come to you. And when I say what the Bible says, you have life. You either believe it or you go and believe it in heaven. It will be too late. Be a tither. Look at my son, lucky student. Titan. Tithe. Tithe. Everything God gives you. Don't say, right away there. We'll be near the chairman. It's God that touched their heart. Tight on everything, your gift, your this, your this. Yes. That's why when you pay the salary 10%, you are wrong all the time because nobody lives on salary alone. Always make sure you go ahead. You go ahead. You go ahead. God doesn't need your money. You need him more than he needs you. So be faithful. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. Or abound with blessings. Among the wisdom that makes wealthy is Titan. 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 So Tuesday, the last service for wisdom impartation service. We are going to be talking about the supremacy of supernatural wisdom. 
don't miss that service make sure you come bring people from your offices hands will be laid on everybody and it's going to be a very powerful time in the presence of god lift your hands to jesus this week something financially supernatural is coming to somebody shout i receive it let's share the grace may the grace of our lord jesus christ love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore somebody shout amen. amen shake him and say receive the wisdom that makes rich receive the wisdom supernatural overflow i live in prosperity my name is pastor amata and this is holy hill chapel assemblies of god where the gloomy is made glorious we just heard about wisdom to move from poverty to wealth i don't know about you but that message was my message by my father, your father, Reverend Dr. Kujo Boatin Benfa. But in case you didn't catch the message and in case you didn't hear exactly what he had to say, catch us on social media. You can get us on Facebook if you type in at Holy Hill Chapel AG or on YouTube and on our podcast, type at Kujo Boatin Benfa. That's K-W-A-D-W-O. Make sure you type it in correctly and you get all our messages coming up on the podcast and you won't miss anything. You can also catch us on television for our live services. On Tuesday, for our miracle and communion service, you can catch us from 7 p.m. on SBM Plus TV and on Fox TV. Now on Fridays, for our instant miracle service, you can also catch us on SBN Plus TV, Fox TV, Ago TV, AG TV as well. That's all from 6.30 p.m. Now on Sundays for our mega family service you can watch us from 8 a.m. on SBN Plus TV and also on Fox TV. You can also listen live from the Volta region in Ho on Global 105.1 FM that's live from 8 a.m. So make sure you don't miss our live services. Now, if you want to watch our repeated services on Monday and Tuesday from 6.30 p.m., you can watch us on AGTV. You can also watch us on Sundays on the Almighty GH1 TV from 4.30 p.m. We have lots of other TV stations and radio stations coming to join us. My name is Pastor Amata. This is Holy Hill Chapel. We can be located just behind the GCB Tower at Kwame Nkrumah Circle. Don't miss us for anything. Jesus is Lord.